introduce yourself. Yes, hello everyone. I'm a junior project manager at the Zero Project, and I'm really looking forward to receiving all your nominations, hopefully. And uh, um, yeah, about myself, I'm from Italy, uh, worked at the Zero Project for a bit more than one year, and uh, really excited about the topic of education and again, hearing everything from you. Thank you, Maria Chiara. And uh, also thank you, Patricia Reisel, our international sign interpreter for today. Uh, thank you for being with us. And thank you again for everyone for joining us. Before I introduce myself, I'll briefly hand it over to Anna Koenigseda, one of our other uh, staff members in the call. And then we will get this webinar on the road. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Anna and I'm with the Zero Project since three and a half years now and I'm the Director for Business Partnerships and Operations within the teams and very happy to, to have all of you in this call and uh, happy afterwards of course to answer all, all the questions that you might have related to the call. Thanks Robin. Thank you Anna. And as Anna mentioned, this webinar really is about you, is about your questions. So I will try to keep myself as brief as possible, um, just outlining some of the key tenants, some suggestions, some tips for this call for nominations. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robinson Weiss. I'm the Director of International Affairs at the Zero Project. I, for those of you who can perhaps hear me but not see me, I am a white Caucasian male in his early 30s uh, with a receding hairline because that's what happens when you get old. A uh, short cropped beard. I am wearing a blue polo shirt and a dark blue blazer. And I'm smiling because I'm uh, here with our Zero Project Network, which is international and inclusive. And always a treat to interact with, be it digitally or in person at the Zero Project Conference. Without further ado, I will share my screen. Please use the chat function for any questions which might come up during the presentation. Uh, my colleagues will note these questions. I will note them after I exit the presentation and will answer those as well as you will have the opportunity to put on your cameras and audio to voice any questions after during the Q&A. If at any time I'm talking too fast, too slow or using language which is not clear, please let my colleagues know in the chat function and they will alert me to it and I will make the necessary adjustments. So what are our goals for today? A lot of you might already know the Zero Project. So the what in, in the sense of what is the Zero Project might already be answered. But nevertheless, uh, for any of you who have maybe received this invitation from a colleague or a peer or a friend, I'd like to take the brief time to give you the background on the Zero Project, which will then also answer the how, what do we do with the Zero Project awards and why do we do them? Why do we put together a call for nomination what does this call for nomination look like? And I hope that not only will I be able to answer those questions, but specifically encourage you to take that step and to nominate your work for our consideration. So for those of you um, who are not familiar with the Zero Project, we're a nonprofit foundation based in Vienna, Austria. And uh, we were founded in 2008. And like any good uh, upstart and nonprofit, through trial and error, we found our way of working, which is research driven. And since 2013, we have followed the same principle, a four year research cycle, each year having a different theme in which we go around the world and collect, identify and award the most innovative and impactful solutions that remove barriers for persons with disabilities. Having done that since that time, we've been able to grow a network of over 9,000 members, uh, experts, pardon, from 180 countries which allows us to pursue this very bold mission which we have, which is indicative of our name, Zero Project for a World with Zero Barriers. And therefore, that mission and that goal is to find and share solutions that improve the daily lives and legal rights of all persons with disabilities. So I just wanted to recap that again for those of you who are not familiar with our work and with, so to say, our Zero Project DNA. Now, on your screen, you see the hashtag ZeroCall24. That is an abbreviation for Zero Project Call for Nominations 2024. And as mentioned before, 
we have a four-year research cycle in each year addressing a new topic. And this year, that topic is inclusive education and ICT. And I'll delve in and give you some examples of specifically what this entails. And maybe this might encourage you to see your project or your initiative through a different lens and perhaps encourage you to nominate your work for our consideration. On the screen now, what you see are three graphic pillars, Romo Grecan pillars on which three words stand. And these words are of, are of importance to us, specifically because they point to the three key criteria which our peer review experts look for when reviewing the nominations. And this brings me to a very important point, which we like to stress at the Zero Project, is that it's not us, Robin, Maria Chiara, or Anna in the call who are reviewing these nominations, but international experts uh, who, similar to a scientific paper, peer review and assign scores according to categories and criteria. We believe this is very important because if we were to receive an inclusive education nomination from, say, Ecuador or Paraguay, Neither myself or Anna or Maria Chiara would be in the situation to assess its innovation or impact or scalability because neither do we know the language, neither have we lived in Latin America, or do we necessarily possess the deep knowledge and expertise and experience in that field in order to do so. Our peer review experts, however, do. And the three key criteria they look for are innovation, impact, and scalability. Now, those are big words, they mean a lot to many people around the world. So I'd just like to take a couple of moments to spell out in, in simple language what we believe innovation impact and scalability to be. Innovation, first of all, for us at the Zero Project means that it can include technology, but it doesn't have to. And more importantly, innovation for us answers the question, what is unique about your project and program. Maybe your project or program is the first project or program in your country in which persons with disabilities managed the program, in which persons with disabilities ideated the program, or perhaps a coalition or alliance of disability-led organizations which came together in order to, per to pursue this program. Innovation points to within the socioeconomic setting, so considering the culture, considering the background, considering the economic conditions on the ground. Has this been done before? Is it unique? Is it different? That for us is innovation and how we answer the question of innovation, not necessarily, is this the latest technology or is this something which is powered by artificial intelligence? Which yes, we very much encourage and accept nominations which are AI powered. But at the same time, innovation for us does not start and not, does not end with technology. It is a much more holistic understanding of innovation, which we apply at the Zero Project. Now, when it comes to impact, that for us boils down to two things, qualitative and quantitative data. What do I mean by that? Essentially, numbers and stories point to stories, user experience, lived experience, and let us know how this work has impacted persons with disabilities, and at the same time, provide us with numbers, with metrics on how your work has impacted, influenced, enhanced, and removed barriers for persons with disabilities. And the last point is scalability, this idea of both growing and replicating. How can what you do be replicated, be applied elsewhere? Is something which you have come up in Belgium applicable in Bolivia? something which you've come up in Canada, applicable in Cameroon. And this really answers the question of, are there any funding barriers to what you do? Is the work you do low cost, low tech, or high tech and high cost? And having a full understanding and picture of that is also important for us and our peer review members. Now, these three pillars, these three criteria, they're not black and white. What do I mean by that? It's not one plus one plus one equals three but the understanding that we take a balanced view of these three criteria and that some of your work might be very impactful and very replicable, but perhaps not as innovative or very innovative and impactful, but perhaps not necessarily scalable due to cultural reasons or other factors. And because of that, you really want to 
put on you the impression that this is not a make or break deal. These are the criteria we look for. And we hope that you see a lot of yourself in these criteria and are encouraged to apply because we specifically are looking for solutions which help and address multiple disadvantaged groups, double discrimination, women with disabilities, gender equality, arts and culture, and also solutions which help and address multiple or severe disabilities. So to recap, zero project call for nomination 2024. What is the focus? It is education. It is ICT, which is information communication technology or short for information communication technology and the arts and culture, which is also of particular importance to us. So I will not bore you necessarily with the details and the definitions because all of these can be found on our zero project call um, for nominations 2024 website, which my colleagues will post in the chat, which includes all of the definitions of the specific subtopics. What I want to highlight with this slide is that for us, education starts from preschool and goes through all stages of life. This can include formal education, technical education, as well as life learning and generally education in emergencies. So really all encompassing education under the principle of one classroom for all. So no segregated education and the education of course has to be inclusive and accessible. Regarding ICT, we have 13 subtopics, which again are diverse and all the definitions of what we consider orientation services or digital libraries to be can be found on our call for nominations website. What I wanna however stress is again, the bandwidth. If, you have, if you're working on something which is powered by artificial intelligence, which includes internet of things, robotics, gaming solutions, we wanna hear from you because for us, ICT is a burgeoning sector, it's a fast growing sector, and we need to ensure that these technical advances and digital advances don't come at the costs of persons with disabilities, but instead are ideated, managed, and enhanced by persons with disabilities. And last but certainly not least, the idea of arts and culture, that everyone can enjoy the arts on equal footing. This can include access to museums, helping museums to be more accessible, helping radio to be more accessible, film, recording, orchestras, theaters, radio, photography, anything you can think of as being an artistic or a creative expression of any type of sort. If your project, if your program, if your initiative is making that more accessible, we wanna hear from you. So now the question might be, okay, interesting call for nominations. Where do I start? How do I proceed? Overall, and I, this is where I'd like to come back to the slide of the three pillars, we would like to encourage you to think about language that speaks to innovation, impact and scalability. What do I mean by that is specifically highlight in your application how we as a Zero Project and our global network can help you on your journey. Where are you and where do you wanna go? What impact and what track record do you have? And what are the next steps you would like to take? Because we see the experience as a Zero Project ROD being one that is sustainable and long-term. For us, it doesn't start and end with you being invited to the Zero Project Conference at the United Nations, but it really starts and grows to us continuously working with you over the years, considering you for other speaking opportunities, seeing how we can help your trajectory and your growth, and ultimately providing you with a platform in which to stand and highlight the good practices you've developed. Because as mentioned, we do not peer review these nominations. We are simply a network of networks that brings together various stakeholders across all disabilities and across all continents and gives them a stage and gives them an opportunity to interact with each other. And that for us really is what the Zero Project is about. Furthermore, for those of our peer review experts who are cited, they wanna visualize the practice or the policy. They wanna see videos, they wanna see photos, they wanna hear stories. And really to ask yourself, if someone were pitching to you, if someone were presenting their work to you, how would you like to receive that information? Are you more of a graphic learner, a visual learner? Or perhaps do you do well with text? And really preparing a nomination, which is both captivating on paper, 
but which translates into images and photos. And this doesn't necessarily have to be Hollywood style, high quality pictures, but really pictures and videos and material which highlight what you do, which highlight the people you impact, which highlight both individual stories, user stories, as well as larger metric data and trends and statistics, which you can point to. So as part of a, what we consider a good practice in terms of application is bringing that all together in a concise and compact way. And here is one of our former awardees, Be My Eyes from two years ago, who, and these are actually part of the materials they uploaded as part of their nomination, in which you can see a nice mix between qualitative data, so specifically numbers, in this case, how many users they had, geographic distribution of users, the distribution of users with and without disabilities, and also clear and simple language in one, two, three sentences or in one paragraph, which highlight in essence, what is the practice about? And we believe you don't necessarily need, um, you don't necessarily need a big PR budget or PR team to do this, but really just bringing it down to the essence in simple language, what is your work about? And more importantly, the better you do with your application and the more simple you are in the application, it will save you from doing work down the line when we get back to you potentially as an AORD and review together with you the language for the Zero Project fact sheet. Now, I'd love to take all of this from the abstract and into the practical. Who are actually our former AORDs? And to give you just a couple of snapshots, and maybe some of these AORDs remind you of the work you do, or remind you of colleagues, peers, and who are doing similar work, who perhaps you would like to actively encourage um, to also nominate. One of the first awardees I would like to mention is a uh, awardee from Brazil from 2020, which developed a program which trained both educators and municipalities in how to create inclusive physical education classes. So in other words, sports classes for everyone, not separated by abilities, but a sports class that it is able to entice and encourage children with and without disabilities to play sports together, to experience uh, the, the community, community power of sports and to really drive home that inclusive education is not only classrooms, but it's also physical activity. Physical activity done together, not separate. In regards to inclusion within the classroom, but we also actively encourage our inclusive policies, the idea that policies can be nominated and recognized because they also change situations on the ground. An example from 2016, uh, the state of New Brunswick um, forbid segregated education by law. Now, some might ask, well, is this innovative or not? And again, I point back to the slide of innovation, which again, through a socioeconomic lens asks, is there something unique about this? And in this instance, it was unique because prior to 2016, kids were segregated in an education setting. And this policy explicitly forbid that. It was, it was a first uh, ripple effect towards more inclusive education within Canada. So that for us is also an innovative policy, which we like to highlight. Another policy more from the hardware, pardon, another practice more from the hardware side is the 2019 awardee from Namibia, which developed low cost environmentally friendly hearing aids. And that is also something for us, which we like to uh, specifically highlight to break through this notion that ICT innovation in terms of accessibility and assistive technologies is a European centric or a North American centric endeavor. Very much to the contrary. We believe that a lot of innovation exists in the global south that there are a lot of innovative entrepreneurial communities which are coming up with fantastic solutions which are to our criteria impactful innovative and scalable and this is a very good example of that also regarding arts and culture and a wordy from last year uh, 2022 from colombia was a government-sponsored radio station in which those who are visually impaired and blind created content for all persons with and without disabilities pointing to two things that a radio is alive in 2023 and b that the arts and culture is thriving and that uh, disability centric content is something which is appreciated by the general public 
then also regarding uh, community platforms, um, a 2020 Airwardy from Ireland uh, set up a fantastic uh, platform in which parents and teachers of children with learning disabilities could learn from each other, could learn from course content, and also very scalable um, Airwardy of ours, which we are proud of. And to the last point also of arts and culture, um, again, to bring back this question of innovation, what we particularly liked about this 2019 Awardee from Moldova is that it used theater in schools to address discrimination against persons with disabilities. And to us, we really tried to highlight this aspect that regardless of country and region, innovation happens. And innovation can be something as simple that in an environment in which persons with disabilities were actively discriminated against, if there is an organization, if there is an entity, if there is an alliance, if there is a partnership who's working against that, who's removing barriers for persons with disabilities in a creative uh, fashion, then that is definitely something we want to hear about. That is definitely something which we believe our peer review members will also appreciate and assign scores indicative of the innovation with this, which is within something like this uh, MRD. So this brings me both to a good and good news. The good news is you still have some days left, specifically 12 days to go prior to the deadline of Sunday, June 18th. And the second good news is, and this is not public yet, but will now be public through this webinar, that we will actually extend this deadline. We have seen now in the past weeks, fantastic nomination numbers, and they really speak to, I think, the high demand and interest in this year's Zero Project Call for nominations. So we want to ensure as we're gradually entering vacation territory, that everyone has the time to complete their nominations. And therefore, uh, the extension will soon be public, um, but we can already let you know that the final and ultimate uh, deadline for the Zero Project Call for Nominations 2024 will be in the first week of July. So we hope that you use this time to really put your best foot forward, to think of the content you really think speaks to your uh, nomination, and also to keep in mind those three key criteria, impact, innovation, and scalability. So this awardee journey effectively shifts down from June 18th to the first week of July, which then will allow us um, the months of uh, July and August for the peer review process. And final decisions should be communicated around the month of September 2023, in which then with awardees, we will work in the months of um, October, November to really finalize your fact sheets, find a common language which speaks to the great work you do, and then publicly announce you at the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, namely December 3rd, 2023. And what comes after that definitely is one of the key added values of being an AWD in our estimation, which is a Zero Project Conference 2024. Without being self-aggrandizing and without you know, pumping us up too much, this is the largest international disability inclusion conference in the world. This year in 2023, we welcomed over 1,300 participants from 80 countries at the United Nations office at Vienna, and really were able to give our awardees an international stage in which to stand on, in which to learn from others, in which to share their work and to share their potential and what they're doing. And these are some of the impressions you see here on the left, the photo, of our founder, Martin Essel, and our CEO, Michael Fenbeck, with one of our awardees. And on the right, a group photo, um, which shows only a small uh, group of the very diverse and very international group, which we had on the ground. And of those of you in the call, and I see uh, Connie van der Rock is one of our Zero Project ambassadors and others, uh, they can, I think, really attest to the special magic which happens at this conference. It is hard to put in words, and I won't even try, but it definitely is, without a doubt, one of the key added values of becoming an AWD, of enjoying that experience, and really, as I like to say, joining our Zero Project family through this conference. It also points to something which we're very fortunate about and very thankful for, which is a very close relationship with the United Nations in Vienna. This year, we celebrated 10 years of partnership. Our conference has been hosted 10 years in a row at the United Nations, and we are one of the few, if not the only nonprofit which enjoys uh, this privilege. And it's, it is a privilege because 
it is a privilege which allows us to give space, to give agencies to those who are doing absolutely fantastic work around the world. And we hope that this again is another level of motivation for you to say, maybe I'm on the fence, maybe I'm skeptical, maybe I think my project is too small, but to really say, no, I'm here for a reason, I know my worth, and I would like to nominate for the Zero Project Call for nominations, and we really actively would like to encourage that. And last but certainly not least, something I would like to mention as well is the Impact Transfer Program. This is a fantastic consortium of the Zero Project, GIZ, the German Agency for International Development, ATOS, the French multinational corporation, and our Chilean partners, Fundación de Scubrame, which have bound together an eight-month accelerator program in which you are paired with a mentor, which follows you on your journey and is able to really advise you on the key strategic steps to take next, as well as a webinar program, which um, follows um, during those eight months and also extremely high visibility and uh, pitching sessions specifically to the impact transfer program fellows and this is a honor which is bestowed upon 10 of our awardees each year these are hand selected and i think especially for those of you in the call with international aspirations and interests to really scale and replicate your programs abroad this might be a well-suited program and also one to think about and to consider during your application on what, again, to answer this question, what would I want, what would I need from the Zero Project and its network? Um, one of my colleagues will happily also share the Impact Transfer Program website in the chat for you to also do some deeper research into um, what the program does. So all of this as a word culminates in the database and I can think we can come back to, to the database later on um, because I really would like to set aside as much time as possible to questions and answers. And you've heard enough from me. So what I will do is I will shut up and I will hand over to Anna Kunixeda, my great colleague, and she will be able to walk you through some of the questions and queries you might have. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, thanks, Robin. So I've noted down some questions that have been uh, put in the chat during this um, this part of the webinar. So I will go through them and then please feel free to, to ask other questions, put them in the chat or ask them directly. So one uh, many uh, asked from you asked if we could make uh, the recording and the PowerPoint available yes yes we will do that uh, i think we will put the recording on on youtube and and share the link we will check with our communications team but definitely we will share the we will share the recording and also the powerpoint that you have seen uh, today another question was on the topic of impact for the call for nominations so robin has mentioned that uh, if um, one very important aspect of projects uh, is uh, the impact so we are looking for projects that already have proven impact so that have been already implemented that have already started uh, with an exception of uh, ict innovations i would encourage you also to to nominate even if it's not yet 100 percent implemented but if there is at least a prototype because we might have some uh, specific uh, programs that could be suitable for these projects I hope this answers uh, this question. Then uh, we had a question about the subtopics that uh, Robin has elaborated on. Uh, when you go into the nomination tool, you will have the different forms that you can choose of if you are uh, if you want to nominate the project of civil society, public sector, business sector, or ICT. And then you will uh, have the form available to answer the questions. So there is no um, space or area where you would need to select the sub select the subtopics. The subtopics are for us uh, just uh, and for you a support to to better understand what does inclusive education mean. What kind of projects are we looking for? You do not have to decide or mark anywhere in the nomination form which subtopic you are uh, assigned. You would assign your project. So that's absolutely not necessary. It's just a help for you to see, okay, is my 
do I have a project in one of these fields? Because very often inclusive education, I mean, is, is a very it's a very vast term, and uh, this is uh, a help and and a better for a better orientation that we write down and that we explain the different subtopics. But again, you do not have to add uh, the subtopic or uh, to select it in in your nomination. Uh, then um, there was uh, another question regarding the document, the documents that you can attach to the nomination. So um, there was um, uh, some uh, someone from Vietnam who who asked this question. So if um, you do not have to deliver translation for very long documents, so if if you join documents, add documents, uh, in, if you add a summary in English, that is perfectly fine, so that we know what this is about. Uh, and as Robin said, uh, adding video and photo material is always something that we specifically recommend. There was another um, question about the scalability of the project. So how to how to decide if your project is scalable. Uh, I, I can imagine that sometimes this is not very easy to judge. So that's why we have a lot of experts who can then have a look at, at your project to see is this a, is, is a scalability an element of the project. Uh, I would say um, you can you can charge it if you see that your uh, you think that your project can be implemented in a different area geographic area which means it's not at all 100 percent uh, linked to this very specific geographical setting or also if your um, your uh, project can also be transferred in another sector acti of activity so that is for you i think the first um, um, judgment that you can do and then I definitely i would encourage you to nominate and then uh, we will have the feedback of our experts and uh, to see uh, if they think and if they see scalability in your project. Um, I think that has been all the questions. Uh, I see that there are some, some new ones in the chat. Marie Chiara, would you like to read some out or should I have a look yeah. at it? So um, we have a question from CBM Tanzania. Uh, if we submitted the application in 2022 for 2023 uh, and the project was not selected, can we use the same project to resubmit again? And how can we get feedback on the previous submission as part of understanding the gaps? Uh, yes, so the first uh, answer is yes, you can submit a project that you have already submitted uh, last year and um, we, uh, we can have a look at it, uh, what, was the, um, what was the feedback on the project. Sometimes we, our feedback is that uh, perhaps it didn't fit 100% the topic of last year and perhaps we even encouraged you to, to nominate uh, this year because it's a better fit to inclusive education. But uh, let us uh, write down uh, the organization name, and then we will we will have a look at what the what the, um, the reason was that you were not uh, selected. Um, so within that, I, I might perhaps jump in, Anna, if you allow me. Just um, two things to note, which might be helpful for those considering to nominate. On the one hand, you can nominate several times. So if you are a bigger organization or if you're an organization, for example, which has a hardware, which you would like to nominate, and also the application of that hardware in a school setting. So let's say you have an accessible keyboard or you've made textbooks accessible, you could nominate that innovative hardware itself. And then also that hardware being applied in school classrooms elsewhere. So there's an option of nominating more than once. If you believe that it is, different from what you do and so if, if the first nomination is significantly different than the second one or it addresses something entirely different under inclusive education and ICT and also something which we believe a lot of you have very interesting um, colleagues and peers in your network and you know of interesting work they do you can nominate on their behalf with their consent of course as long as you identify a point of contact, which has also been informed of this honor, you're able to say, I personally know Maria Chiara, she's a good friend of mine, uh, she's doing fantastic work at so-and-so organization, and you could highlight her as a point of contact and fill out the nomination for her, if you would like to do so, just as a heads up. 
Yeah. I have uh, written down some other qu other questions. So um, the question was if you need a signature, uh, online signature in um, somewhere in the nomination form. So not at all. No, you have to click on the submission button and you do not have to have any kind of uh, electronic uh, signature. Um, then there was a question about the form. So the, the nomination form is online in the, you can find the link to the online nomination platform on the website that we have already posted. If it's difficult for you to use the online version, please feel free to uh, write an email to the office at zeroproject.org uh, and we can, we, can have, we can give you um, an accessible word format of the, of the form that you might need, civil society, business or public, for, for example. There was another uh, question about ICT and inclusive education. So inclusive education is the main theme of this, um, of this year. ICT is completely uh, detached and, and unrelated to inclusive education. Of course, we are, we're happy to, to get nominations from any kind of edutech um, projects, but in ICT uh, projects, ICT nominations can be from other, from other um, areas as well. It could be as well an ICT uh, job platform as well as an orientation system, anything that supports accessibility. So again, ICT uh, nominations are, can be on any other topic as well as, as inclusive education. Uh, another um, question was about the language you can submit uh, your nomination. So no, not you do not have to nominate in English uh, language. We offer uh, six languages where you can nominate. So and this specific question was about Spanish. So yes, you can you can nominate. You can choose uh, the Spanish uh, the Spanish form as well. Another one was about um, the team members. So we unfortunately have a, a small glitch in the system when we use the nomination tool from uh, another uh, organization and we have already asked uh, for it to uh, delete this. There is still the gender and date of birth uh, question. So you can, you can um, unfortunately it's still mandatory. So we, uh, we apologize for this, for this technical error and uh, you can just enter any kind of date or any kind of information. We will not look at it. You can uh, set uh, um, by default something. So we're very sorry for that. Of course, we do not, we do not ask this and it's a very good uh, question that this is absolutely of course not relevant for, for us. I have just sent another reminder that we need to solve this uh, problem. Uh, and I think there are two people who have raised their uh, their hand. Uh, I see the first one is Dorothy. Dorothy, would you like to 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 ask your question? Yes, thank you so much. This is Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy, I'm a woman with psychosocial disabilities and from Uganda, and I'm I'm so happy to have been one of the awardees of Zero Project 2023, and I attended the. The, the, the global conference, the zero project conference. And I also participated in the impact transfer program. Uh, um, my question is, is uh, if UNISA, UNISA is the organization, uh, if we have another, another innovation other than the, the, the innovation that we won the award on inclusive education, uh, are we eligible to 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 to, to apply and uh, and and also when when we went to apply, of course they were showing us that you you have already nominated and you have and, and they showed us the 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 nominations that we have already done. So uh, how do we get help? Thank you so much. Um, Dorothy, just I repeat if I have understood your question uh, correctly. The question was if you have a project to nominate that is not on inclusive education. If no, you can. That is, no, that is on inclusive education. Okay. Yes. So even if so, you have been awarded uh, in the last nomination cycle. Of course, if you have um, if you have a project on inclusive education this year, you can nominate this project. Being an awardee for one specific project does not exclude you for the next for the next nomination cycle. So I would encourage you to 
if it's exactly the same, uh, then there would have, to, then uh, there, there we would have to have a look if there have been uh, um, um, any updates or uh, development. But on if it's a, if it's on inclusive education and, and a different uh, project from last year, then uh, please go ahead and, and nominate. Okay. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you, Dorothy. And nice to see you again. Uh, the next in line, I see Michal Topaz. Would you like to um, to go ahead and ask your question? I think you're still on mute. Yes. Yeah. Yes, can, you yes. Uh, can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So uh, my name is Michal Topaz. I'm from Israel, um, and uh, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Shikum Khel, a nonprofit organization. We work with uh, young people, uh, all age and all around life, uh, through age, uh, people with disabilities. Um, so my question is, uh, if it's uh, good enough to um, apply uh, about, uh, we are doing um, a we are doing a lot of stuff, okay? But uh, one uh, um, one part that we are doing, we are doing uh, courses uh, and uh, a lot of um, uh, preparation uh, through to to know the job market uh, really good, and we use uh, digital tools like VR that we are uh, developed uh, inter interactive. Uh, uh, system uh, national. Uh, we have um, projects that uh, we can uh, uh, replicate it in all around nationally, uh, internationally. I'm sorry. So my question is, uh, if we are uh, need to go to um, the preparation uh, according to education, the preparation of our people with disability through education, through uh, for schools, for uh, job integration, for the um, uh, a lot of young people that don't have any knowledge for the job market, uh, or uh, to include with the technological and digital uh, innovation tools or to apply it uh, like differently, separately. I don't, it's my first time that we are uh, applying. Uh, we're uh, from 2016 operating in Israel, uh, but it's my first time. So it's, uh, I'm sorry if it's a weird question or I, I, no. I just don't know, so. It, 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 it's perfectly fine. So I think um, uh, we would need to discuss it perhaps a little bit in more details. What what is the one project or the other, or if you can nominate it? What I could suggest um, is uh, Maria Chiara will will post this in the chat. You can book uh, one on one meetings, twenty minutes with one team member, and perhaps as it is the first time that you are nominating, that you explain a little bit more what the courses are about, what the, what the assistive tech part is, and then we can we can uh, guide you in the in the right direction if. That is fine. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think that would be that would be um, the best um, solution for you, so that you can really explain it in a little bit more details. Because it's very difficult for us now to chat uh, from this very short summary. But in general, perhaps a general uh, remark regarding anything that is training on. Um, uh, um, uh, or specific skills training. So what is important for the nomination as it is inclusive education topic is that there is a structure, that there is a curriculum, that there is a specific diploma at the end. And um, so that is one, one main uh, aspect, but actually I would, I would like to, um, to encourage you to really book uh, these 20 minute slots uh, I think Maria Chiara has already um, uh, put it in the mm -hmm. chat. You can go there and then we can uh, we can discuss it in a little bit more details what specifically we would recommend you to nominate. Is this is this fine with you? Yeah, it's uh, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Anna, uh, we also had a question from uh, Samaritanum Trust. Yeah. Who, yeah, yes. Yeah, I think, yes, and uh, for you, I would say the same. So because you have a very specific question on what you should 
or should not nominate or how on which category. Um, so really, uh, all of us have uh, free slots in tomorrow, um, end of the week, in the next few weeks. Uh, and if uh, you have any doubt, we can discuss it in 20 minutes and yeah. Yeah, can I quickly raise a uh, 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 small query? Yeah. Yes, of course. Hi, hi, hi. good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, this is Shuram Deshpande from Samarthanam Trust. We run an inclusive education school where more than 300 plus children with disabilities and uh, non-disabled children are studying in the school. We, we started off with our intervention uh, with, with a smart board and a tinker lab uh, and mini science lab three things uh, which we implement here. And these three things are scaled up in uh, more than 300 plus schools, uh, mainstream schools uh, across India. So can we apply for this award? This is my question. Uh, yes, I think, um, I mean, we would need to know a little bit more about the program. So, but in general, I think uh, I would definitely encourage you to nominate. And perhaps for you as well, as Maria Chiara already um, suggested, to also book a Calendly invite, so book a 20-minute slot with a team member, and then we can go through it a little bit in more details. But uh, I think uh, I would uh, I, uh, would encourage you to, to uh, start the nomination, but uh, of course, happy to, to have this 20-minute call where we can explain a little bit and talk a little bit in depth about your, about your specific project. Okay. Yeah? Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, I, I see two, email two ID. hands which, raised. Which, excuse me, which email ID we, do we have to write? Um, it's it's in the chat. There is a, a website and then you can choose you can choose a slot that is free. Perhaps Marie Chiara send it uh, specifically to, um, Marie Chiara. to this participant so that uh, yes, we can, uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a person with visual impairment. It yes. would be great if you can share the email. Yes, ID. yes, yeah. yes. We, we, will, we will share it separately. Yes? Thank Good. You. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Uh, I see two hands still raised. Uh, at the first, uh, Anima, would you like to, to, to ask your question? Well, I, I had a question, but I'm not sure if this would be answered here or mm -hmm. in a 20-minute session. Yeah, so again, the question one was that uh, I have an educational solution. We have yeah. an edtech platform for persons with disabilities, and it is going to be, uh, it has an impact and it has scalable, but the numbers as as of now are very small because we mm -hmm. have just been operating for past one and a half year. So one question was, can we nominate it? So I don't know whether it has to be answered here or in twenty minute session. Uh yeah, no, yes, definitely. So impact, uh, of course, can can be different. It can be smaller numbers at the beginning, but then, of course, uh, bigger numbers afterwards. So we we also encourage projects uh, at all at all at different scales. Uh, let's say, and I would definitely encourage you to nominate the, the the most important part. You have already mentioned it is that it is already implemented. You have already. Uh, the product is or is ready, is on the market, and the pro the platform yes. is 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 active. So definitely, you can you can nominate. What is uh, very important in the nomination, as Robin mentioned already, uh, that you that you add these facts and figures to the nomination. So how many users do you have? How have the the number of how has the number of users developed? What are your plans for the next one to three years? So really, don't forget to add this uh, um, this um, quantitative data. Uh, okay. One more question yeah. is that yes. there is one question that zero mm -hmm. project created impact in last past five years has zero project created impact mm -hmm. for you. Yes. Uh, now I have been only operating for past one and a half year and uh, I am not sure what all to add in this uh, answer. To this, this is, yeah, so this is a mandatory, this is not a mandatory question. This is that we find out if organizations, for example, they have met, they have been at the conference and then there was something that uh, has come out of a, any conversation or any any meeting they might have. So that is also to, to see what impact the CEO project creates in bringing uh, people together. If if there are, you 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 don't have anything to add there, that's fine. Then you can just say that you that it's not yet your case because you've started your project a lot uh, a lot uh, more recently, and perhaps you haven't been at the at the conference yet. So that's not a problem. 
And uh, just jumping in for, for the sake of the timekeeper, um, Regina yeah. Colvin, I think, has been waiting yes. very patiently. Ah, yes, sorry. Yes, and I, I, we will we will let her ask the last question because I think she has her hand raised virtually. Mm -hmm. And then I will proceed to answer one question in the chat, and then we'll try to close it out on time because I know everyone is is busy. And um, we'll make sure then also to post again at the bottom of the chat the consultation call URL. So with that being said, Regina, thank you for your patience and you get the last question. Hello, everybody. I'm Regina Coen for Brazil. Uh, I apply and I am in touch with Zebra Project for a long time. I got an award in 2018, I don't remember. And it's to complement the question already made here uh, about the project submitted last year. My was not really approved. And I am an architect, uh, wheelchair user, and work with accessibility uh, for a long time, more than 25 years. Uh, my inclusive education project uh, is not exactly for schools. I work with the students of architecture, uh, with a methodology that we got at the Guardian European institution a long time ago. And uh, we teach them uh, the right way to work with accessibility. Do you believe uh, it's a possibility to apply a project like that? But uh, I'm not uh, anymore at the university. Now I'm working with the Architects Council of uh, the state of Rio de Janeiro. Is it possible? It's not inclusive education in the lower level, but in the academic and universities level. Uh, definitely. So formal education, we understand really all the three levels, so primary, secondary, but also university education. So that is also part for us uh, of uh, inclusive education. So we take projects from uh, early childhood intervention already on, so until the eight the age of six, and then the primary school, secondary school. But of course, we also encourage programs to nominate that are for university students. So to answer your question, yes, a university. But I also ask the, if I can apply, not by the university, I'm not working there anymore. Uh, uh, and uh, I continue to work with this team, uh, with inclusive education, but in the Council of Architects, Brazilian Council of Architects. So then you can give this as an organization. The That's not a problem. You can, you can give the organization that implements it, this Council of Architects, but you describe the university program or the program that you're working on with, with okay. the, the students. And this, okay, thank you, Anne. You're very welcome. So with the very good question from Regina ending out the webinar, I'll just give a verbal 